So in this video, I want to tell you a tool that I personally use a lot. It's one of my favorite tools that helps me come up with new and different thinking, and it is yet to fail me. It works all the time. Now, why do we need tools to help us think in new and different ways, I hear you say? Because I think all of us, and I mean all of us, are a bit like a frog in a well. See, we're in industries and professions that many of us have been in for many, many years. So we have a very, very deep understanding. We know all about the inside of our industry, of the world that we live in and that we work in. But because of that, it's sometimes hard to see what's going on outside that, outside that well. So we have a very deep understanding, but often also a very narrow understanding. Now, when a problem arises or a challenge arises within that deep world of ours, it's sometimes very difficult to come up with new and different things because everything we see around us is stuff we already know. Therefore, we need to go elsewhere to find inspiration. See, the majority of innovations actually come from outside worlds, or at least they're inspired by outside worlds. It's, it's what we call thinking out of the box. When people say thinking out of the box, they basically mean thinking out of that deep and narrow expertise that we have. A little caveat on tools, as we said before, a tool is just a tool. There's nothing wrong with the tool. It's all about how you use it. So let's get back to the question then. I asked you, what do Japanese bullet trains, Airbnb, and Nike shoes all have in common? Well, all of these innovations actually came from elsewhere, or at least a big part of the innovation came from an outside world. Picasso once said, good artists copy, great artists steal. And let me tell you the distinction between those two. See, when you copy something, you literally copy the original, you copy the idea. If you steal something, you basically steal the principles behind it and make it your own, thus creating an original again, even though it's a version two, even though it's a spin-off or, ins or inspired by something else. Now, why is that important? Because whatever your challenge is, if you distill down to the core of your challenge, I bet you somebody else has already solved that challenge for you out there in the world somewhere. So stealing is all about going into that world, learning all about what they're doing, and then reapplying it to your world. We say reapply because an idea only has to be original in its application to the challenge or to the problem. Let's give you a few examples. In the spirit of storytelling, these stories are a bit simplified. I am sure the actual path to that innovation was a lot more complex and onerous than I'm telling you now. But again, in the spirit of storytelling, here goes. The first example I gave you was the Shinkansen Japanese bullet train, incredibly fast. Now years ago, the front of that train was actually not pointy, it was more flat. And as the engineers tried to make the trains faster, what they realized is that every time it had to pass through a tunnel, it would create this, this, this air pocket inside the tunnel that by the time the train came out, it would create a sonic boom and would create lots of noise pollution. And the problem was every time they wanted to make the train faster, they found ways to make it faster, but that would create more noise at the end. Now the inspiration to the solution to this problem came from a fairly unlikely world. See, one of the engineers there was an avid bird watcher, and he noticed that the kingfisher shoots from the air into the water without making much of a splash. Now water is about 800 times denser than air, so they started looking at how a kingfisher does that and one of the things they found is that particularly the beak is shaped in such a way and has a certain texture that minimizes the splash on the water. They took some of the principles of the beak of a kingfisher and applied it to the trains hence giving it that pointy form and what this did is they didn't create the air pocket in the tunnels and therefore making the train faster with less noise. Woo! The second example is Airbnb. I'm sure some of you have stayed at an Airbnb around the world. It is disrupting the industry, but a lot of the inspiration, again, came from outside the world. See, the founders of Airbnb were massively influenced by Charles and Ray Eames, the American designers of this amazingly comfortable chair. What Charles and Ray Eames did is they wanted to create affordable design for many, many people that's comfortable and luxurious. They also had a very iterative process of kind of trial and error. And these principles were applied to Airbnb, which make it one of the most successful business that we have in the world right now. And the third example is Nike. This is Nike Flywire. The engineers at Nike wanted to create a super, super light shoe and they had super light fibers that they used on the outside. 
The challenge was, however, how do we make it sturdy enough? How do we make it strong enough yet keep it light? Because if we add all these support materials, the shoe will become heavier. So make it as light as possible, yet very, very strong. Their inspiration for the idea for the flywire shoe came from suspension bridges. Right? The cables here are structured in a way that can keep a very heavy object floating in the air, light and strong at the same time. If you look closely at the Nike Flywire issue, you can see similar fibers or similar cables inside the shoe. Inspiration from shoe came from a bridge. There are tons of examples of how people step outside their world into different worlds, learned about what they did and then reapplied some of the principles to their world. Lush soap was inspired by farmers markets and fresh markets. Velcro was inspired by little sticky burrs. Modern suits were inspired by military uniforms. Philips lighting solutions were inspired by artist paintings. Building engineering was inspired by beehives. And coating and paint for boats were inspired by shark skin that will make them glide through the water faster. There are tons of examples where people have stepped outside their world, went into different worlds, learned all about them, took the principles and reapplied it to their world to come up with new innovations. And you can do the same in three simple steps. The first one is finding out what the essence of your challenge is. Now in business, we often use complicated words to describe a challenge or a business brief. This is about doing the opposite. This is about finding out what is the core of it? Like what, in one or two simple words, what is the essence of our challenge? Now, when you cut through the clutter, business challenges might be uh, how to engage customers, might be how to sell more, how to get buy-in from people. It could be around how do we structure ourselves so we waste less time. It could be around treading into new territories, you know, finding new markets. That might be the core of your challenge. The second step, now once you have the essence of your challenge, do a quick and dirty brainstorm. A couple of minutes, don't make it too long, kind of go, where else do people know all about this? Or who else knows all about this? So let's say it is treading into new territories. Could you look at explorers and mountaineers, what they do when they go into new territories? If it's all about engaging, well, think about people who engage an audience, let's say a stand-up comedian or, or a great public speaker that can really captivate the audience and what they're doing, thus, thus having amazing engagement. And then the third one is taking the principles around what they do and reapplying it. We talked about copying versus stealing before, right? Copying is taking the exact idea or the exact design and stealing, we said, is more about learning about it and stealing the principles, but you have to make it your own. That's making it an original again. So it's not literal. Imagine that the engineers at the Shinkansen uh, bullet trains had taken a, just, just a really big Kingfisher beak and put that on front of a train that probably wouldn't have worked. So a great example of stealing is this YouTube channel. I went online and I saw all these you know, business videos and, and even live, I've seen lots of business presentations and speakers out there who are really good. Like they know their stuff, they, they have expertise, they have depth, they have knowledge, but so many are so incredibly boring. The essence of my challenge became, how do I take something that, that can be quite dry and make it really engaging and really interesting and a bit more fun. So I stepped into the world of younger YouTubers who make videos about blowing up a watermelon or uh, skateboard videos or uh, stand comedians even, people really good at storytelling. And I took some of the principles there and applied them to these kind of business videos. That's a great example of stealing. So I don't directly copy what they're doing. I learned some from them and I applied it back to my world. So the next time you've got a challenge, Think about what is the essence of the challenge? What is the problem I'm trying to solve? Then quickly brainstorm, like who else knows all about it? Who solved this problem for me already? Jump into that world, learn all about it. Like I said, online searches, talk to somebody, uh, role play, there are different ways of doing it. It's a creative process and then applying some of that learning to your solution. I bet you, you're gonna come up with new and different solutions. Now, does this guarantee that you're gonna come up with the next billion dollar idea? No, it doesn't, there are no guarantees here. What I will guarantee you is that you will come up with something new and different, which is always a little bit scary, but hey, that's part of the creative journey. Imagine that the engineer at uh, Shinkansen bullet train in Japan had come back into the office and said, okay, I've got an idea. See, there's this kingfisher that dives into the water and imagine everybody else had shut him down and said, that is a ridiculous idea. They never would have come up with the idea to make the trains much faster and therefore save a lot of money. To recap, to come up with something new and different, you need stimulus and inspiration. 
That stimulus and inspiration often does not lie within the world you operate in. It lies outside. So the trick is to step into that world, learn all about it, and then reapply it back to your world to come up with new and different thinking. And to help you out even further, we have added a little link below in the description, which will give you a simple recap of this tool, which you can use in your next sessions where you need to come up with something new and different. So thanks again for watching guys. Uh, hit us up, drop us a line at hello at the magic sauce.com. Hit that subscribe button below, leave a comment and do all that other good stuff to give us a bit of a thumbs up and we'll catch you here next time.